Welcome to Astro Energy with Astrologer Angel Shelley Overton. Hello, welcome to the Astro Energy Show with me. My name is Shelley Overton, and I'm excited to be here with you today. It is good to see you, and it's a sunny day here in Orlando, very lovely. The moon is in Scorpio today, so there you go, you know. Scorpio moon, that's kind of my thing. I have a 12-degree Scorpio moon, and it's at 9 degrees today, so... If you remember how it was not too long ago with uh, Saturn and Scorpio, now we get to relive it a little bit. This is probably, what, the second moon since Saturn went into Sagittarius in Scorpio. So um, I think that it might be a little bit intense. You know, that's kind of what happens with Scorpio moons. But uh, anyway... I want to welcome you, and if you are interested in getting a reading, you can get one at 347-994-3365. And so today, we're well, we're going to go around the chart and see what's going on. But as of tomorrow, Mars conjuncts Jupiter. So that's pretty amazing, I think. Um, it'll be conjuncting at 13 degrees of Virgo. So let's jump in here. Let me, You know what? I don't even have a chart on the current time, so let's just get that. There we go. Okay, so in Orlando, Florida, 11 degrees Pisces is on the rise right now. And um, we have Neptune at 7 Pisces. The south node is in Aries at 0 degrees 57 minutes retrograde. And we've got a 14 degree uh, Aries cusp for the second house with Uranus just into the second house at 18 degrees Aries retrograde. He's opposing the sun in Libra. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's nothing in Taurus, nothing in Gemini, nothing in Cancer, and nothing in Leo unless you're looking at asteroids, which this chart does not have asteroids. Um, this Venus is in Virgo at 5 degrees. And then the... Uh, Descendant is 11 degrees Virgo, and Mars is just over the Descendant at 12 degrees. Jupiter at 13, North Node at 0 degrees Libra, Mercury at 3 degrees Libra, Sun at 21 degrees Libra, Moon at 11 Scorpio, because I was looking at the chart for this afternoon at 1.30, so now the Moon is at 11 degrees, not 9, and that means the Moon is right there next to my personal natal moon and that means you'll get me today with the moon almost exactly well probably in minutes conjunct my own moon (laughs) and then we have saturn and sagittarius at two and pluto at 13 capricorn so that's quite a guy full of planets and um, speaking of which just yesterday i did a mural a very cool mural for a friend And it was all about like a mystical sky. And she had a mobile with the planets on it. And it was right in the corner near where I was doing the the mural. And it kept whacking me in the face. Saturn kept hitting me in the face. I kid you not. And I just thought that was rather amusing. And I also got hit by Neptune. (laughs) Anyway, um, so Pisces rising. Now, I don't know about you, but... I have been completely knocked out for like a week with this Neptune opposing all this Virgo energy. And I'm telling you, it's really difficult because I have so much Virgo in my chart wanting to express itself, wanting to work. I've got projects all around me. And I did this mural yesterday. I got home and I was wiped out. And today I am just like, you know what? I'm always on the go. And this is also what Neptune is doing for this Virgo Mars He's saying, I know you want to get going, but let's take a chill pill. And so that's kind of what's been going on. And so this afternoon, and actually all morning, I just sat on the couch and looked at YouTube videos. I really did next to nothing today. And I definitely have Virgo guilt, but I also know that it has been 
really wonderful to just kind of sit back and do nothing. And, you know, I don't often take days like that. Usually Sunday is my do-nothing day. And that's about one day a week that I take off and do nothing. So if you've been feeling that way, that's exactly in alignment with the planets. And Venus, of course, is two degrees off of an opposition to Neptune. So she's feeling it. So uh, right now, Venus and Mars and Jupiter are all within an orb of an opposition. So what does that mean? So let's talk a little bit. Well, actually, maybe I should do the other planet. So, nah, nah. We talk a lot about those. So, you know, Pluto's still in about the same position. He's trining Venus right now along with Mars and Jupiter. So, well, let's talk about that a little bit, and then we'll get into our topic of the day. So, um, Venus trining Pluto. So, Venus is the feminine, the desire, in an Earth sign, which is grounded, practical, pragmatic, and thinking. Because uh, even though it's an Earth sign, which can make the sign very dogmatic and very stubborn, very difficult to change, because they want it, material they want it down to earth and they want it as a given they don't want it to be changeable but um mercury rules virgo and virgo by nature is questioning and can be changeable because of the Merc- mercury connection so um there there can be a lot of ideas that well let's just face it if you've got any virgo in your chart you're going to have a lot to do (laughs) because that's what Virgo does. It's always analyzing, always coming up with ideas and then wanting to take action on them, wanting to make them tangible and real. So the trine of Venus desire to Pluto life change um, and also the opposition to Neptune is creating this amazing dynamic of making your dreams happen. And it's a major life change for the tangible shift in your life that is going to be your vision and your dreams. So I would say that's pretty huge, wouldn't you? And Mars is backing it. So, again, Mars is wanting to take the action. And it's kind of like the little kid who wants to run and do things and the parent holding on to the shirt. And the little kid's running away. The toddler's like, no, no, let me go, let me go, going on. And the parent holding on going no it's nap time (laughs) no well what nap time is doing which is neptune is saying i have more information to give you that could be helpful to this endeavor and so if we take the time to rest do yoga meditate sleep we will have an enhanced experience of this dream and the the challenge of creating this dream and we're not going to get away from it. It's not going to happen. So you may as well just go with it. Um, that's kind of what I did. And I'm, and it's kind of ironic because usually when I take a nap before my show, I'm very groggy, but I woke up and I looked at my clock because I never trust that my alarms are going to go off when I want them to. I always feel like, I will completely let go and give myself over to the wonderful deliciousness of sleep. And I will completely miss what I'm responsible to do, which is my show or whatever else needs to happen. And today my alarm, of course, didn't go off. And I looked at the time and it was 4.58 and my heart leapt. The adrenaline pumped into my veins. I came out to look at the TV and it was 428. So I woke me right up and I had a whole half hour to get ready. So that was to my benefit, I can tell you, and yours. So, um, and then Mercury and Libra, again, you know, air energy, Mercury is in very much an air energy because it's electrical, it's intangible, it's very quick. It rules another air sign, Gemini, and in Libra, it really infuses Libra with so many ideas, direct from spirit. So that energy is going on, three degrees, Mercury in Libra. And then we have um, Sun in Libra, so our egos are wrapped up around balance. The ideas that we get are about balance, about partnership, 
and wanting to create something maybe um, that affects the masses. So, of course, all the Libra energies and trying to urine us um, by, by, oh, not, that's not what I meant to say, opposition. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so the sun is opposing Uranus right now. And, of course, Mercury will be in opposition to Uranus in the coming days. So um, that opposition to Uranus is saying, you know, again, it's kind of, Instead of the parent pulling you back, it's the partner pulling you back, and Uranus wants to do things. But, of course, he's also retrograde, meaning he's not getting as much done. He's getting it all done in his mind, <laughs> that we're all, we have so many ideas, but and we want to do something tangible, which is Aries, and we want to take action because it's drive, but it's not happening because Uranus is running backwards. So he's saying, well, you know, I have these ideas, but I'm just not able to make real tangible use of them just yet. And so Neptune and Uranus are working together there. So once Venus gets out of this opposition, it's really the last energy of the quicker moving planets that are in opposition to Neptune. And then, of course, Neptune goes direct in November, which is the 18th, right around the 18th, because, again, my ephemeris that I have is not accurate until the beginning of the year when I get a new one. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say that. It's not precise. It's by day, not by minute. So, And so then um, when Neptune goes direct in November, that's when we'll get back into that forward flow of things and intuition will be more on point will be you know probably a little more drowsy the only reason we're drowsy now is because of the opposition and also saturn moving into square and he's a very strong drive as well saturn wants to get things done well he wants to organize and in sagittarius he's just like okay let's do it and he's squaring neptune who's also kind of bogging him bogging him down and that will be so through, uh, let's see, Neptune, and it'll be in uh, November, excuse me, December, the first week of December, he breaks free when he goes at, to 8 degrees on the um, 4th of December, and then he'll break, the Nep- or Neptune will um, break Saturn's grip and vice versa, so... Saturn will be at 8, Neptune will be still at 7 because Neptune likes to stick around wherever he's at and not move very fast. So anyway, okay, so Jupiter conjunct Mars. So, you know, again, the archetype of Mars, it's the ruler of Aries. It's aggressive, assertive, and drive-oriented. He wants to get it done. He wants to go. Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, is also a go-getter, and in Virgo, he's a worker and so generally uh, Jupiter is a player and in Virgo that play playfulness is about work so let's play in work let's play in help how we help people how we're of service to people Um, how does that work well um, whatever we are inclined to do which is altruistic so we're in it for the benefit of others I hope I didn't just clear my throat in your ears because I thought I muted, <laughs> but I'm not sure if I did. I, I apologize if I did. Anyway, um, Mars in Virgo, excuse me, conjunct uh, Jupiter. Jupiter is wanting to expand those realms. So, of course, um, being humble, being of service, doing things in the health industry, and Jupiter is expansive around spirituality and education. So he's bringing in those elements to the pragmatism. He's bringing in this desire to look at foreign energies, to look at other countries, and how can we be of service. So probably right now the key is what are we doing to help the health of that which is foreign to us, that which is in another country, you know, how are things happening and I would say Mars conjunct Jupiter. I haven't looked at any foreign energy right now, um politically or what's going on, you know, with accidents or anything like that. But um it could be a time of accidents. I know Virgo and Aries are probably the most accident prone signs. Um 
Aries and Mars tend to be very forthright and just do it. So they don't tend to always look around them and see what's going on. And so they leap before they look, which can cause accidents. And also um, Virgo, for some reason, and I tell you because I have Virgo, um, Virgo's accident prone. And I think they, they're they all in the thoughts and maybe lose track of the physicality of things. So the two together, Mars and Virgo, is going to be a little more accident prone. And I tell you, I've gotten a deep paper cut. I have uh, fallen on my tuchus. I don't know if I had the show since I know I did it on Monday, I think, and um, or last week. And I'm telling you, I was leaving quickly out of my house and I fell straight down on my tush. And yeah, that did not feel good. I think it happened Friday. And I'm just now able to move around. But it was kind of a rough weekend. So be very cautious. Slow down a little. Look before you leap. I'm using the railing. I'm watching my shoes because they were wet. And you got to do that kind of thing right now. Um, it's just a heightened accident energy. So with Mars in Virgo conjuncting Jupiter, which expands the energy, you're going to see some of that coming out. And so I wouldn't be surprised if there were some type of accident. And I I don't like to say it. I never like to predict accidents, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's something involving planes because Jupiter and Venus squaring Sagittarius is about travel and more specifically airplane travel. So wouldn't be surprised if something happens that way. But, you know, with Jupiter, it could also mean that it would be, you know, something, some situation that might pull out, you know, like whatever happens, it it may have a more positive ending. So I'm going to just stick with that and hope that that is the case if anything does happen. But definitely accidents are heightened right now. Um North Node, North Node in Libra is pretty positive around relationships, so there could be some uh entering relationships, especially um you know being a Virgo and having so many planets in Virgo with Venus in Virgo, it's a very heightened time of feminine attraction. So I it's kind of crazy. I don't feel like I'm doing anything differently, but Apparently, I'm catching the attention of many people right now. So you might also, with this energy, it's really good, especially if you're a woman, good, strong, feminine attraction energy coming in. And by the time Mars gets to Libra, good things can happen. So um, let's see, that will be in November. It'll be after the 12th, 13th time frame in November. So it'll be a good Thanksgiving, I guess, huh? Anyway, okay, so that's kind of my synopsis for this week, and I'm going to take some calls because I like talking to my callers. So let's see who we have on the line. 201. Hi, 201. Who is this? Hi, it's Jennifer from New Jersey. Hi, um, Jennifer from my New bir- Jersey. <laughs> my birthday was this actually Friday, October 9, 78. Happy birthday. Okay, Thank yeah, you. I've got you right here. What's cooking for me? Relationship or what do you see? What Relationship. Going on? Um, yeah, Libra, yeah, I think relationship coming up for you too in uh November is like okay. again, like I said, Mars going in Mars for you. Um mm-hmm. even probably a little before you have well, you know, right now, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, good stuff, and it's on your Saturn. Venus will be approaching Saturn. Mars just was on Saturn, but it's in okay. work. So there's definitely mm-hmm. some energy around work and I wouldn't be surprised if someone comes in in the workplace that piques your interest. Mm-hmm. Um, that could be the place, you know, where it germinates. And then the tw- when you get to 26 degrees Virgo, that's when uh, Mars gets to your house of marriage and partnership. So you'll definitely be looking for that balance. And that's okay. the first week, of, first week of November that happens. Hmm. So, and you also have the North Node. The North Node um, just passed your natal North Node in Virgo and now it's in Libra. So you're thinking about it. So what happens is, you know, this happens for everybody too. So I think definitely this time of year and right now specifically because of sun in Libra and Mercury in Libra, that's the ego wants the balance of a partnership. And then the thoughts start culminating in partnering with someone. Then uh, right. Mars will get there. And then when Mars does it, that's like, okay, now the action has to happen. Now the, something okay. is going to kick up. So that's why um, the first week of November looks like a really good time for you for that. 
Yeah. And then um, Mars will be conjuncting Pluto also, which is life change in your house of partnership. So that could be a really good impetus and as when well. when does that happen? That when happens when it gets to 16 degrees, um, mm-hmm. and that is in December. It's December 11th. Okay. So, yeah, that's a really good time wow. too. And then, you know, you can meet someone, but it may not always germinate right when you meet them. But definitely right. when Mars gets to Scorpio, Scorpio is the committer. So mm-hmm. that could also be a really strong time for you. And that happens the first week of January, January 3rd. So I would definitely, if you're if you're seeing someone that you're interested in, like if nothing's really culminating, right around the right. January timeline, put out, like do a little ceremony around what you want. Make okay. the, um, the physical tank, yeah, the action. Um, like mm-hmm. do some kind of little ceremony and then that, you know, put that into the universe, light a candle, make the resolution because wow. it's a really great time for you and your chart to get things going and, and make commitments. And that includes other situations too. Like if you're mm-hmm. looking to partner with somebody for some type of business endeavor or something like right. that, or, you know, legal commitment, that'll happen then too. Right now work is work going crazy for you. Are you um, expanding things around your work environment? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of not right now with my health. I'm not oh, so it's affecting you and your health. I mean, cause that's, it's the sixth house. Which yeah. Is health is. Yeah. So, um, so- Okay, well, with health, you know, the Venus-Mars-Jupiter conjunction, this is a really great time to come up with a solution and mm-hmm. to make that, like, boom, real. Like, I mean, I think Venus, of course, the desires, you obviously desire a solution for that. So, And Virgo is right. meticulous about health. So mm-hmm. I would think that something should be there, a solution for you. The only problem, of course, right now is recently all the squares to Saturn. So, The um, Saturn energy is, again, it's about getting out and being physical with your legs and moving your body and out in the outdoors and nature. So if there's any way that that could help you specifically, that might be a a thing to look at. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for the call. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Okay. So we're moving on to 928. Hi, 928. How are you? Hi, Sherry, Sophia. Hi, how are Sophie, you said, right? Or Sophia? Uh, Alfina. Oh, Alfina, I see. I just can't yes, seem to get yes. that. I don't know. You've got just a little voice. Maybe I'll have to turn up my end of the mic here. There we go. Okay, what can I do for you today? I'm interested in someone. Oh, okay. So you want me to do their chart or you want me to do their chart with you? Uh, I guess with me, like, do you see this, like, when, I guess, is, is it going to happen sort of thing? Oh, okay. So, let's see. Okay, do you know the birthday? Or you don't want to do the birthday, you just uh, want to look at your chart? Uh, their birthday is June 18, 1991, but I don't know the time or okay. the birthplace. Okay, we'll do a sunrise chart, and you don't, well, where do you know this person? We'll just give them a local is it Los Angeles or Arizona? Uh, no, it's Arizona, actually. They live in Arizona. Okay. Uh, is it Phoenix? I just put in Phoenix. Uh, that, no, some, they, no, they're like, do you need their hometown or just if they have a where hometown, they're at right I'll, now? I'll use that. That's great. That would be a good place to start. Uh, Shanto. S H A N T O. Uh, S H O N T O. Oh, okay. Arizona, right? Yep, looks like that's it. Okay. Okay, one second. Okay. Let's see what's going on that day. So I know it's a Gemini, and Mercury and Gemini, late degrees Gemini. So this is a person who has, um, like when you're born in late degrees of a sign, it's kind of like, yeah, I've, I've, (laughs) <laughs> in a spiritual sense, like they've already culminated most of the Gemini energy and are kind of at the last degrees of that energy moving towards the next energy, which is cancer. So this is a person who like indefinitely by progression will be more Cancerian or let me see, 91. Yeah, probably more Cancerian in energy as an expression. So um, he may be someone who is more inclined to want to spend time at home right now. Um 
And then let's see, he's got a lot of Leo. Let's look at you. Hang on a second. I'm going to put your charts together here. Okay. Well, um, I'm just kind of taking in both your charts. We both have the strong fire energy in your chart, so I can understand where you're attracted. And um, his Uranus and Neptune are right on your Venus. So that's probably the most significant energy that's popping out at me in your charts right now, other than the trine to Sagittarius with his Jupiter, Venus, and Mars. That's really interesting. So he's got a Jupiter, Venus, Mars conjunction in his chart, and there's Jupiter, Venus, Mars conjunction, conjuncting in the sky right now. So that's definitely affecting him. And I will just tell you that when you have the same planets clustered only in a new sign then it kind of energizes that part of your chart so he's kind of energized in the well he has those three planets in your commitment sector and it's energized a little farther along in your commitment sector so that would be a good thing because it's also like those planets in the sky right now are trining your or his his uh uranus neptune and also your venus so definitely i could see some um Commitment possibly coming your way. That's a good thing. Um, cool. I'm, we I'm also... were gonna we were gonna try and stuff, and then uh, last night I I guess I said something that sort of upset him because I already do kind of notice he kind of is more. Sensitive. I can tell you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Well, he's got but... he's got Chiron and Cancer within three degrees of your moon. So there's kind of like a, the wounding there is around the mother energy. And for you, oh. that falls in your house of uh, partnership, the sixth house, seventh house. Excuse me. I can't even get my time to go right. Seventh house. And he also has Vesta in Cancer. So this is someone who's definitely, and he's got the south. And this is like a major karmic uh, wounding around mom. Okay. He's got Vesta. South Node and Chiron all in Cancer, and you have Moon in Cancer. So he's probably looking to you for some kind of healing around that issue. That's a big part of the attraction in the partnership, just so you know. So I would look and see what kind of relationship he has with his mother and look at the dynamics of that. You know, I mean, I say this all the time, mom and dad are the biggest dynamics in our relationships. So, but him specifically... You know, with your chart, that's where it falls. But even just the symbology of cancer is going to be mom, even in his chart. Like, we don't know what time he's born or where that cancer falls in his chart, but it's definitely an issue. So um, I would say this is something that probably, I mean, other things look positive, but the thing that I'm looking at here for you for potential is that you could be in a relationship with him and there would be this is the dynamic is that if he gets hurt by you in some sense he will withdraw is that what he did um yeah because i i texted him this morning he didn't reply so yeah. i'm just like uh, silent treatment. Okay. That's the hallmark <laughs> yeah <It's a> silent, <laughs> silent treatment thing mm-hmm. but he's so, going to come uh, back though right like <laughs> um let me look at his chart with what's going on in the sky because i don't have him paired up with the current chart. So let me just look at that real quick and see. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Okay, so he has Jupiter on his moon. And his moon's in Virgo. So that I have to tell you also, moon in Virgo. So he is very analytical around mom and or has a very smart analytical mother. And I would say maybe a little bit cold. So, um, and that's the energy he expresses, you know, the, the mom energy in his chart is expressed through a little bit more left brain analysis. And right now all that's being expanded with Jupiter, Mars, and Venus going right over his moon. I mean, Jupiter is about to be conjunct his moon, then Mars, and then Venus, actually probably Venus might get there before Mars. I don't know. I have to look, but they're all right there. Um, and so, He's definitely got, again, like that Venus on, in Virgo is definitely expanding that area of his chart. Um, the thing for him, though, 
<laughs> is that all that Virgo is going to be squaring his sun and his Mercury. So he can be a little bit self-absorbed at times because Gemini, and the other thing with it is that Gemini will, um, the energy of Gemini will be um, here and like wherever they are at the moment, that's where they really are. And then when they go somewhere else, they're really there. So, you know, like when he's with you, he's with you. And then when he's gone, he's where he is, you know, like in his mind, he's just completely where he's at at the time. So, you know, I'm I'm just giving, I guess like what I'm doing is I'm giving you the things to watch out for. But, you know, the good parts I can see, you know, that there is a very strong intensity about what goes on with this man. Um, Uranus-Neptune conjunction is pretty intense. So he's he's very much, it's like he wants to be in charge and he doesn't really want input from others, which is Uranus and Capricorn. You have Venus and Capricorn, one degree off of his Uranus. So there's kind of an understanding in a way of the energy of this part of the sky, which is that responsible um dogmatic energy but where you may want to have something a little more soft and fuzzy he'll be very cut and dry and go well and and analytical about it but then he can follow it up with a little bit more of the feels but he can be like he's got neptune and capricorn and that's somebody who idealizes the way things should be in a structural sense like it needs to be this way. And if I'm going to be with you, then we're going to do it like this. And these are the slots and labels that I have to have it in. And and then he, you have the moon opposition. So the moon opposition, that energy probably throws him for a loop a little bit. So especially with the Chiron right there on your moon. So um, he will come back, but I'm telling you when the cancer moon people are wounded, they will run and hide and lick their wounds and give you the silent treatment. And, of course, having a moon in cancer means he's, like, his emotions are triggered by the moon. And the moon changes every two and a half days. And right now we have a moon in Scorpio, which is in trying to his moon, and it's very watery and very in the deep part of the sky. And, of course, um You've got the moon in Scorpio, Mars in Scorpio. He's got Pluto in Scorpio. So he can understand the depths, but I would just watch out that he might be a bit broody. And that's probably what's going on with him right now. Okay, so we both have moon in Cancer? No, he has moon in Virgo, and he has Chiron in Cancer. He has Chiron in Vesta and the south node in Cancer. So Vesta is kind of the, the woman energy that can wound you i mean i know that the symbology of vesta is like vestal virgins it's like the feminine energy but i've noticed that when vesta is someplace that's where you have kind of a wounding so i'm thinking that he's had this wounding that kind of is triggered on top of the fact there's also chiron in cancer which is another wounding so i'm just letting you know like your moon in cancer in this part of the chart for him wherever that falls for him he's extra sensitive to this mothering issue, okay? So it's like it's really like he doesn't necessarily know how to relate to the mother energy, okay? Because his moon's in Virgo. He knows how to relate to that nurturing intellectually. I mean, well, I wouldn't even say that. He doesn't know. I honestly don't think that he necessarily knows how to relate to nurturing. I think that he knows how to do. He knows how to analyze. He knows how to categorize but he doesn't know how to let someone do nice things for him. Does that make sense? Wow. Yeah. He's a doer, and he is a thinker, and, you know, he's he's not overly fuzzy. He's got Saturn and Aquarius, which is thinker. Um, he's got Sun, Mercury, and Gemini, which is a thinker. Then he has Jupiter, Venus, Mars, and Leo, which can be a doer, and he needs to relate. He wants to understand, which is going to be to your benefit. Because in your house of commitment, that's where you have the Leo. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to understand about relationships, and that's where your benefit is, okay? he's He, he likes connecting and understanding another person's point of view. He's just not as good with 
like moms and the way moms can be, which is like, oh, honey, that's not good for you. Why don't you do it this way? Like that, no, that would set him off. <laughs> so when you interact <laughs> with him, don't tell him how, like how a mom would correct a child because that will completely rub him <laughs> the wrong way. Okay. Okay. Um, but he will come back. So, like, do you see a time frame of that, like, two to three days or something? Or, like, um, longer than that? Wait, this happened when? When did he kind that of happened late? last night. Like, last, last night? Oh. I said something to him, and he Yeah, kind of... he'll be back probably within three days. You know, Moon's in Scorpio. Scorpio also goes to the depths. And when Scorpio's wounded, they also, like, the water signs pull back. And Cancer okay. pulls back and licks their wounds. Scorpio pulls back and plots revenge, and Pisces pulls back and goes into dreamland. Okay, so that's the water sign. So right now he's plotting his revenge, and in, when Moon goes into Sagittarius, he'll pop back out. Okay? okay. And, and you've got you. Sagittarius, Mercury, so when the Moon hits your Mercury, you'll probably hear from him again. Okay. okay. All righty. Okay. Thank well. You. You're welcome. Thanks for the call. Bye. Okay, let's see. We're going to go to our break and go to our happy place again today. So see you back in just over a minute. In these days of stress, running around, responsibilities, we all need a little place to go to to make it all better. Is that place sports, football, or maybe you like to garden, paint, or just listen to music? Wherever your happy place is, you can find a shirt or mug to reflect that happy place. At myhappyplace.rocks, we have a variety of lifestyle products, including iPhone cases, pajamas, and pet items, all with beautiful, colorful designs, which help us go to our happy place. Stop by on the web for great gift ideas for others and yourself. Myhappyplace.rocks. Lenny Pickett appears courtesy of Random Act Records. Check him out at randomactrecords.com. You and Jupiter conspire to get me. I think you and the moon and Neptune got it right. Hey, welcome back. My name is Shelly Overton, and you are listening to the Astro Energy Show on Blog Talk Radio. So, how are you today? Are you enjoying the weather? Are you enjoying the beautiful fall? I'm very happy the weather has finally cooled down just a tad, just a skosh here. And, um, you know, it's looking very beautiful. We actually have cumulus clouds and some blue sky. So, yeah, it's gorgeous. Anyway, let's take another call. So, 509. Hi, 509. How are you? Help me. I'm good. Who is this? Erica. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> have you called under another number before? Um, no, it's always been this one. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so I don't have your chart, and so is it? Is it spell your name: E R I K A K A. Okay, I wasn't sure if it was C or K. Okay, um, hang on one second. Okay, what what's your birthday? It's twelve four ninety three. Okay, I have a friend who was that birthday. Cool. Um, what time? I was twelve oh five p.m. Twelve oh five p.m. And where were you born? Um, La Nipalanta, Mexico. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to spell that for me. <laughs> I'm trying to Google it. <laughs> okay. What's, is it close to Mexico City? Um, or Monterey? I'm not really sure. But, okay, so it's, um, I know it's T-L-A. Okay. And then um, N-E. Uh-huh. P-L-A. Okay. Is that the whole word? And then N-T-L-A. 
N T L A. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's quite I think that's a scramble of letters. <laughs> okay. Let's yeah. See. Um, I don't see it on my atlas, so we might just go to. Oh, geez, where? Which one is it? Tlapuala, maybe. Hang on. No, it's Planta. Planta. It's not coming up. Oh, there it is. Is it plant? Plant la. Okay. Why did it not come up? I put it in exactly. Oh, there's an L missing. Okay, that's why. Yeah, I'm missing one L. L. <laughs> okay, yeah. so what's the next for you now? Um. Well, I was just wondering what you see in career and um love for me. Come career up. and love. Okay. Well, ironically, they're both triggered right now for you. Awesome. That's probably why you're calling. Because in your chart, you have Venus at two degrees Sagittarius, and Saturn is at two degrees Sagittarius, which rules your career and also life purpose, and Venus rules love. So that's pretty awesome. Um, Definitely this chart is saying, what is it you want to do that you love? And Neptune in the first house has a little bit of that dreamy quality going on naturally for you, Um, and it's being triggered right now, and, and it's also squaring Saturn. So this is about doing what you love and being where you love. Did you move recently or are you about to move? Uh, well, I moved back to the university for um, for okay. school, you know, for the fall. Okay, but, um, yeah. I'm applying. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm applying for this internship today, um, and it's and if I get it, um, I'd have to move like four hours. Yeah, so, that makes sense. In, so, in this in January, like early January. Okay. You said you applied today? Um, I'm going to submit it today. Oh, okay, great. Um, yeah, I mean, the moon is right there in the same house. It's just past Jupiter, which is education, and it's coming up on Pluto, which is life change. And it will still be right between Jupiter and Pluto, which means it's bringing light and it's a new moon, by the way. It was a new moon in Libra, so it, we just had a new moon, what was it, a day or two ago. And the moon, I, it's so transient, I don't retain it. Um, but, yeah, we just, we just had the new moon. I think it was Monday. And so the light of the moon is taking energy from Jupiter, which is educa- higher education, so college, mm-hmm. in Scorpio, which is commitment, to Pluto, which is life change. So, yeah, if you um, sub- submit it today, I definitely see it making a major difference in your life and then saturn is on your midheaven so it's at the end of education you have five degrees before saturn gets into your house of career saturn represents career it represents your life purpose and so it is going into that part of your chart so i do see like it's on the midheaven which is right the peak point of your chart it puts a spotlight on that part of your life so the midheaven is like standing at noonday sun and so saturn is saying you need to own being in the spotlight and your career and and then you also have sun mars in sagittarius in your house of career and let me ask you this do you do anything musical no or comedic yeah. nothing okay no. then sports. these are the three areas or uh, well sagittarius rules education spirituality music comedy and travel any of those areas that I like to do? Yes. Oh, well, I like to drive. <laughs> you, you, you like, you're kind of a wanderer. Yeah, I like to drive. Okay. Well, definitely travel is part of your life with Mars and Sagittarius. That And Saturn is going to be triggering all of that. It was It's conjunct your Venus, so whatever your desire is right now, that Saturn is making it, like, so that you have to own it, Okay. So, and mm-hmm. then he's also, you have a North Node conjunction with Venus as well. So that's fortune. There's fortune. Um, I think, you know, definitely the opposite sex or the same sex. I don't know, whichever you prefer. Um, you're very attractive right now to people looking for a relationship. Like, you know, they they want to come with you. And they like, there's a spiritual connection that spirituality of Sagittarius comes out and they want to connect and understand you on a more um, universal level, okay? Yeah, because um, that internship is at the state capital, 
So it's like okay. for students. So so that's what it was. Oh, and I recently changed. Yeah, I recently changed my hair to gray. I went from black to gray. <laughs> you're you're so, so funny. I spend my time covering my gray, and you're dying it gray. That's so funny. Okay, <laughs> I should let it go natural yeah. since it's hot right now. <laughs> anyway, it is. Um, yeah, well, you know, you've okay. So you have Pluto and Jupiter and Scorpio, which is politics. So, are, is this a political internship? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, definitely, I see. Like when you do the astrology of that, Jupiter, Pluto, and Scorpio, with the Moon today and that, um, and then the travel. So, I think you're going to be working. You know, if you're interested in politics, I definitely there's some kind of foreign affairs connection with it. Mhm. Okay. Uh, okay. And yeah. um, Mercury at late degrees, uh, Scorpio. So, you know, that's like my concern. My only concern is that Saturn and Sagittarius is going to wake up your sun and your Mars. And, you know, like you're well, the good thing is, is that it's saying, OK, now you're going to have a career. So it's a culmination of whatever you initiated with the Scorpio because it, mm-hmm. it becomes it becomes the second house to the application so when you put the application in today that becomes the first house and then the next house is yeah. Sagittarius so it's money Interview. from that event and so I think it will work in some kind of paying position and yeah. you're, it's definitely going nice. to change your life you know this is a huge <laughs> shift for you with career and life change yeah. so yeah just know that that's happening what about love yeah, when do you see that? Well, um, I think with Venus and Sagittarius and Saturn there, it's going to relate to travel. So I think if you – I'm going to say when you get the internship, you're going to move, and there's yeah. more opportunity for love there. So um, um, Saturn is basically taking the energy of Venus, creating the circumstances for that. But when Saturn hits Mars, that's going to be more of a culmination of it, I think, And I will tell you when that is, okay? Give me a second here to find my glasses. And I'll tell you. So Saturn at 18 degrees is what we're looking for. So that isn't necessarily right away. It's not, Saturn is not going to get to that degree. So you might meet somebody when you move, but it might not really gel until the end of next year. So it's, yeah, it's going to be about a year before something really happens then I'm, and that's December of next year Saturn gets right on your Mars so next year Christmas that's going to be the time when everything's going to start really opening up huge like you'll be like you won't even I've got chills all over me for this one that you, yeah a year from now in December is really the big time for you okay Mm-hmm. Big time how? I mean, this uh, Saturn, is Saturn is a manifester. Saturn wants to make everything happen and create the structure of whatever energy it's on. So mm-hmm. what happens is it moves into your house of career. You're off and running, doing your internship, and then you're going to be like, it's going to just keep expanding because it's ruled mm-hmm. by Jupiter. And then it's in, you know, you've got Jupiter. The Venus, Mars, Jupiter is in your house of partnership. So, y- again, you are bringing in the attention and when mars gets into libra that's going to be better for you but i definitely think that you're going to move before you meet someone and i would honestly say if you meet someone before you move it's going to be difficult because you're going to be moving so um once you move it's going to be more opportunity and i think it's going to be probably in the realm of the internship what what Mm -hmm. what were you asking i thought you had okay yeah. So that's kind of what yeah. I see. I think that there definitely could be somebody coming in. I mean, Saturn right there on Venus is making you like, I want it. And then Jupiter, Venus, Mars in your house of marriage and partnership. You definitely are more open now to it. Um, Venus is going across your Chiron. So I would kind of turn you away from having anything initiated unless the only reason someone would come in now romantically would be to show you where you've been wounded in the past. Okay. So for me, it looks more like a woman is coming to show you some kind of partnership or friendship or someone in a work environment is coming in to ex- to express that energy of your Chiron, which is like your feminine side. You're, you're very open and helpful to people, which is the Virgo energy, and it's in the partnership house. So, you know, if there's someone in education also, because Virgo can be education too, and Jupiter is right there and just went over your Chiron, so there could be somebody 
coming in or already presenting herself that is showing you where you've been hurt before around work or health or a partner, that kind of thing, okay? Mm-hmm. Education, yeah. um, anything that's Virgo or Sagittarius ruled, and also Libra because it's the seventh house. So it's, you know, spouse, partner, um, ideas ideas around love and also um, the wounding of that. So you, I think you're you're really kind of pushing through that and Saturn went over that point a few years ago. And so now it's just really like wrapping up a lot of those old feelings. And then I think Jupiter just hit your Chiron and now he's moving on. So I think that it's a little bit more clear sailing for you. And definitely when Mars gets to Libra, I think I mentioned that to the other caller, which is November. It's going to be better if you're going to meet someone. And again, I think that you're going to be moving, and it's going to relate to that internship so, and education. So you'll meet someone then. Mm-hmm. So overall, I'm not going to meet anyone until December of next year. I didn't say you year. wouldn't meet anyone. I oh no no no, oh, no yeah, I didn't yeah. say that. No, I said yeah. Definitely, you have some opportunity to meet people. It was Saturn on your Venus. I mean, definitely you can meet someone, but I think that it's probably not going to culminate where you live. I think it's related to the move that you're doing with your education. So, oh, okay. um, and you are going to be extremely busy with your career and that, that would be the best case scenario for you is to find somebody who has a connection to that. Cause you're going to be super busy for the next two years with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll look sure. at your chart. That's, that's where your attention is going to be turning. I mean, right now you're at the last five degrees of the education segment of your, the, college segment and then Saturn goes right in and seven degrees is going to be right there tweaking your career there might be a little bit of backup redoing things when Saturn goes retrograde but mm-hmm. um pretty much you're on into career not too not too long from now okay yeah, yeah sure. Saturn Bye. doesn't retrograde I think till April of next year so March late March so you got until spring okay mm-hmm yeah, and then so and there'll be you. a little bit of video. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thanks for yeah. the call. Okay, Easy. bye. Bye. All righty. We'll have another call from 508. Hi, 508. Uh, I'm going to give you 648. How are you? Hi, I'm good. My name's Robin. Robin, hi. How are you? Oh, you said you were good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so did you, have you called the show before? No, I haven't, but I've listened okay. for a long time, and I'm glad I uh-huh. finally got to get through to you. Um, oh, nice. So um, first give me your birth information, then we'll get into what you want to know, okay? Okay, so it's September 27, 64. Okay. Uh, 8.37 p.m. Okay. In Massachusetts, and that's Falmouth, S-A-L-M-O-U-T-H. Okay. Whoops, hey, so here we go. I'm pretty mm-hmm. familiar with my chart, but I'm not too good at interpreting my own chart. <laughs> So okay. I see stuff in hindsight, and I, I I really like your analysis. So I'm excited, and I, I know okay. that my birthday was was the full lunar eclipse, and I and oh I my gosh, it was. Like was. I yeah. felt like that was significant. <laughs> so I guess I'm just wondering. It, like, yeah, please. definitely. Um, I'm sorry. I'm still trying to find in my atlas the place where you were oh. born. Is it close to Boston? I'll just put Boston in. It's it's couple hours from Boston. It's it oh. begins with an F. F as in Frank, A L M O U T H. Oh, okay, that's why I put in S as in Sally. <laughs> yeah, pe- people always okay. get that over the phone. I'm sorry, there it is. Thank you. I'm glad I asked because I was just for expedience going to put in um Boston, but that wouldn't have been as good because it's two hours away. That's significant enough to me. Okay, so you have a twenty five degree Taurus rising. So yeah, you definitely have this is a year of huge shift and you know like of course because of the eclipse yeah four degrees you have four degrees uh sun it was highlighting that and highlighting um you know the culmination of like the financial culmination of your career and also your um peers around um so do you have a specific question maybe you said it and i don't <laughs> well I in the past Six months, I have a significant relationship that's building, and I haven't had a significant relationship in a lot of years. So I wonder okay. if that has anything. Um, oh, have I you? Moved. <laughs> oh, okay. 
I yeah. mean, I feel like, well, hmm, maybe that's why it's happening because all the planets are lining up. So it's been a number of years, and I haven't ever really thought seriously about marriage. And I, not that we're mm-hmm. talking about it, but it's in the intuitively, it's in the back of my mind. I'm thinking, hmm, maybe yeah. I could finally get married. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you have Saturn in your house of marriage and partnership right now, which, like I said before, creates the structure of marriage. And it's what it's doing for you is saying, okay, what is it that I want out of a marriage that would be my, that would be what I could work with that works in your life? And Saturn, and you have Sagittarius in that house. So definitely the commitment, um, Scorpio on the horizon on the, on the descendant. So Scorpio is like you come into the marriage or to the idea of marriage very committed and very deep um, desires to merge with somebody. But the marriage itself needs to be much more playful and even maybe a little frivolous. And I would say um, definitely someone coming in, they're going to be someone who has to be adventurous and playful and um like to travel, like everything that Sagittarius does, you know, they they could like to hike or do physical things. Like they have to be an active person, and yeah. you know, pro- again, Saturn and Sagittarius, people of other cultures, there's something because you are a traveler, you like to move, you like the energy of other places. So it wouldn't surprise me if you pull in somebody who is from another place as a partner. Uh, and yeah. Jupiter yeah, in your that's... house of romance is also punctuating that so um, all of this this venus mars jupiter energy in virgo is just now moving into your house of romance and that's creativity and children too i throw that in there it's the leo energy and that that's making you again very desirable to to partner potential partners and you have mars just past uranus on his way to pluto uranus pluto like two bombs going off. Uranus is Uranian, so of course that's like you know atom bombs and Pluto, plutonium. So it's like Good. boom, boom, like major life changes and shifts. And Jupiter expands the energy, and it's at thirteen. Literally, you have Mars Jupiter conjunct between your conjunction of Uranus and Pluto. So it goes yep. Uranus Mars Jupiter Pluto, boom, right there in your romance, and it's in Virgo. Oh, wow. So Virgo. It's about the healing, and it's about healing and health, and then um, it's your feminine nature, and it's in a very active uh, area of your chart, the Leo area. So it's about getting attention for your good deeds. It's about um, changing your life and your lifestyle, and Jupiter right there on Uranus-Pluto with Mars, Mars taking action towards expansion, which is Jupiter and doing something, you know, owning what you want, Uranus, own it, you know, you're autonomous around it, Pluto, get rid of the cobwebs, get rid of the old psychological hang-ups that relate to nitpickiness, nitpicky quality, you have Mercury and Virgo, which I have Mercury and Virgo, I have the same, I have Mercury, Virgo, Uranus conjunctum, and well, because your birthday is 17 days after mine, literally, I was born the same year. So you have like this, like, I want him to be this tall and have (laughs) this kind of hair and his eyebrows have to look really nice. And, you know, so you're very particular. So what Jupiter Mars is doing is Jupiter is not particular and Mars is taking that action. So it's fire energy coming in and shaking up. So I'm like, okay, you need to let go. You've already decided these are my list of things. Now stop harping on it and allow it to come to you. Let it go. Give it over to the universe. Okay? Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, I've got one minute to finish this up. Is All there right. anything else you want me to look at? Uh, I just moved from one location to another. Well, I moved across the country two years ago, mm-hmm. but I just moved apartments yeah. mm-hmm. uh, in September, and I think I made a mistake. And I think the landlord thinks I made a mistake, too. So, And uh-huh. I know I did it when... Venus was retrograde. So Which is, like, yeah, you know, my aunt did the same thing, and I'm like, don't do it, don't you do it. And she did it, you did it too. So, um, you know, Saturn's going to help you correct it. <laughs> okay. That was, Neptune that was going the direct, well, yeah, Neptune direct, what, what did I say, November, will probably help it. So, yeah, um, I can see a move. Venus is at the last okay. degree, last five degrees of your house, at home, and family. You'll correct it. Don't worry. It'll come to you. There will be probably work that will come in and help you move. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Good talking to you. Take care. Thanks, Doc.
Okay, that's the end of the show. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. And take care. Bye. Thanks for stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelly Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com, on Facebook at Astro Energy or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at Ironwood.